really thrilled to have you here with us and I don't want to waste um, too much time because I've got somebody who is super, super special who agreed to join us today. Um, she's actually on her way to a football match. <laughs> and she has agreed to talk to us. And the reason I thought it would be appropriate for her to talk to us because, is because I know this room is full of business people, corporate leaders, entrepreneurs, professional women. And I wanted us to just get a sense of what it takes to win from a coach, a sports coach. What? Because there are so many parallels between business, running a business, and being a coach, or may I say, of a very successful South African team. Yeah. Vanyana Vanyana. <laughs> The other reason I thought Desiree needs to come and talk to you is we want to hear from her. How do we make women's sports matter? How do we, in our own spaces, support the work that she is doing? Because it's really up to us. We cannot sit and complain and about gender equality in sports and in, in, in boardrooms when we are ourselves are not supporting them. So without wasting time, Desiree, it's such an honor to have you. Please join me on stage. I'm not going to read your accolades. You, please have a seat. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Desiree was complaining, she says to me, Everybody's wearing a hat and you invite me to this place. I don't have a hat. <laughs> Said Desiree, come in your best self. You, the coach. Woo! I love saying that. Coach Desiree. You're not just Desiree. <laughs> coach Desiree. Thank you very much. It's such an honor. You made us so proud. So, so proud you really lifted a lot of women um, who are leaders in their own right. You made us feel that we can achieve greatness through your leadership of women in football. Please give her another round, round of applause. Okay, so um, just have a few questions for you. Um, how have you been though i've i've been busy and uh, your your you. mic is i think oh you've got on. one okay. i've been busy but i think that comes with the territory i think we all have a role to play we have a story to tell and i think our stories inspire others and we mustn't forget to tell our stories so thank you very doc uh, thank you very much dr precious for inviting me and thank you for the support that you've given us i get your regular text messages we really really do appreciate that um more than you can imagine Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so, so, she is so busy, and yet she was able to read and respond to my text messages during the World Cup. Yes. She is not a very, I am too important to respond to somebody who's just sent me a message to say, ah, I know you didn't make it this time, just hang on in there, it's going to be okay. And she responds, thank you very much for, for that. But I want to, um, you, you're from Salt Home. No, I'm from, I grew up in Salt River. Salt River. we went to school, Salt but, I, River. but yeah. I'm from Inova Park. Okay. Mm. What leadership lessons um, did you gain from growing up in, in, in Cape Town, growing up um, in Salt River, mm. um, your parents, very, your dad, very influential in your ultimate choice of career, your mom very supportive, your sisters, your, your siblings. What leadership lessons did you gain that you find yourself using right now in your job as this coach of Banyana Banyana? Well, my late father was my biggest supporter, but also my worst critic, if I can put it like that. Um, a lot of values, be true to yourself. Yeah. Be true to who you are. Also, when you do things, do it honestly. Um, I go to bed at night and I have no regrets. I put my head on the pillow for the decisions that I've made because ultimately it's all about the team 
and to be authentic. Um, uh, oh, my mom reminds me often, and by the way, my mom's birthday is also in August. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> my mom's a Leo. Leos. My mom's a Leo. <laughs> her birthday was on the 10th of August. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, I wasn't there to celebrate oh. with her. Um, my mom always tells me, treat people the way you want to be treated. And I think that is important because we might be in a position of power, but it doesn't change who I am and where I'm from. I think sometimes when people get into a position of power, they want to show their power. And in that way, they don't show their power, but they show exactly who they are not. So I try to be as humble as can be because I know where I come from. And I think we need to show everyone out there that it doesn't matter if you get into a position of power. You still have a role to play to bring others with you. You still have a role to play to take care of others. And like I've said uh, before, at Panyana, it's all about teamwork. Yeah. It's all about family. People that I've worked with are not anymore colleagues. They're family, they're sisters. Yeah. Because we've got to look out for each other on the field and off the field. And the teamwork ethic that we have, that everybody has a role to play. I never take credit alone. Uh, but if the team doesn't do well, I, I'm on the red carpet. Because everyone there has a role to play. I don't micromanage. Um, they do their job. If they don't do their job, that's when I intervene. When we decide upon something, we call in the senior players and run it past them. Because if you don't get the buy-in, mm -hmm. then everything, your game plan is down the drain. So everybody has a role to play. That is my type of leadership. It's democratic, mm -hmm. but also transformational because you bring someone with you. If there's a cause happening, I'll ask the assistant coach, are you keen? Do you want to go on this course? That's it. Because we have to make sure that when we no longer there, that someone else can step in. I think Ms. Uni former Miss Universe said, take up the space. And I've never forgotten that because I'm in a male-dominated environment, yeah. but I'm not afraid to stand up and take that space because I know my worth and my value and I know my capabilities. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Um, you said something very funny when we had a chat the other day. Um, she came home, she had just done so well in New Zealand and uh, somebody um, bumps into her and says, yay, coach, congratulations. I know you, you are the coach of Bafana Bafana. <laughs> Maybe that's a hint. <laughs> look, <laughs> look um, <laughs> and I insisted, no, I'm not the coach of Bafana Bafana. And she, she insisted. And then someone else came into the shop and they said, she's, but that's what I meant. <laughs> I meant Banyana. <laughs> you know, I respect each and everyone in their workplace. And there's been a lot of talk about Desiree taking over Bafana, but I've got to respect the coach in the position. Um, I think he's doing a fantastic job currently. I've had time with the national team. So I've been with Banyana since 2014 as yeah. the assistant coach, acting coach since 2016, head coach since 2018. So I know the landscape of South African football and women's football. Come on. So, <laughs> so he's, in the beginning it was rough because he needed to understand what it is that he wants to do. And as a coach, you're not going to please everyone. My dad always said, um, if you want to please someone, then give them ice cream because everyone loves ice cream. But at the end of the day, <laughs> I've got a job to do. You have. I've got a job to do, and I've got to select the best players that I can select. Not someone who's influential in their club. It might not fit in with what we want to do. So I've got to stay true to that, and results might not go my way. But the same with the coach. In the beginning, it was rough. Um, there was a lot of questions and a lot of critics, and I'm quite impressed with how far he's come with the team. Yes. We have, we yes. have a team now. Absolutely. You know, but it has yeah. taken time. So I'd like to respect him and his job. Totally. I'd yeah. like to make sure that he knows that I respect him because my space is my space and his space is his space. We don't, we don't know where God is going to take us next. That's all I'm saying. That's so true, Desiree. I, I love your humility, your always respect, very, very respectful um, manner. Do you get that same respect that you deserve? Do you feel that you... I, I, you've just said, I work in a male-dominated environment. Do you feel like when coaches meet at global level, World Cup level, you receive the respect that you deserve? Yes, I do. Um, Jill Alice, goes, we, we share the same surname. She will always call me cousin. And I mean, that woman has won two World Cups, back to back. 
you know, Coach Pizzo is always sending me messages and Fantastic. I think he has set the benchmark. He has shown us that anything is possible. You just have to grab the opportunity. You know, we have many coaches outside that has gone outside the country mm -hmm. that has shown us and I belong to a group of coaches and a lot of them are PSL coaches and, you know, we're always trying to motivate each other on this. So I don't stand back. I know my craft. I've worked on my craft. I like that. I make sure that I educate myself further because the game changes and the game evolves and you're working with athletes that understand the game and you the coach, so you got to be teaching. But the respect that we have, I think it's second to none because we respect each other. I love what you say, um, Desiree. Desiree was an acting coach. Uh, and you say that your coach really believed in you so much, the, the, the senior coach, and, and you, you got the promotion. Mm -hmm. But you also say that you continuously learn, and I love that, that uh, you are always improving yourself. But talk to us about how you made the transition from being a player to being the coach. It was very difficult because we think we can play for a very long time. But while I was playing, I was doing some coaching badges already. Um, and then when I stopped playing, I continued coaching at the club that I, I, that I played for. And um, then Coach Vera came into the country and she had all these coaches and I was still working for the SABC at the time as a pundit. And uh, I went to do a match and the next day she called me in and asked me what license I had. And at the time I had a CAF B and she said she needed someone with a CAF A but that I do understand football. Sure. And then I was doing a match and she asked me to be an uh, assistant for the first match. That was for the first match, yeah. and I ended up being an assistant until she left. I still speak to her nowadays, um, and almost every day, because she's still a mentor. I haven't forgotten that as a coach, you mustn't be afraid to ask. I think people won't think any less of you if you do the wrong thing, but if you ask, people won't think less of you because you don't know. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think a, a lot of the people in the audience are new managers. They've just been promoted into mm -hmm. management positions. Mm -hmm. how, how do you mm -hmm. manage um, just now giving instructions, uh, you know, from being one of the buddies, you, you were friends with your teammates, and now you have to lead them. Uh, how, how have you managed that? I think we sit down um, and have a discussion first of our different roles. Because if somebody new comes into the team, I will have a discussion and I will say, this is your role, that is who you report to, but I leave your space for you to do your job. I'm not going to be standing behind you, making sure that you do your job, because you are here because you have the expertise. Totally. So yeah. I don't micromanage. We sit and we discuss a training session, certain coaches will do certain parts, and I'll be watching. I'll just stand there and watch, and we have a discussion afterwards how it went, and if we can do it better. And I think that respect that we give each other makes the team successful because everybody contributes in this small little way. Absolutely. And um, I watched this, Ray, in... Where was this? Was it in Morocco? Yes. Where we, you won the AFCON? You should have seen her. Um, she had this jersey around. I'm just picturing you. Jersey tied around her waist. And she was walking up and down on the field so frantically. Morocco is strong. They are strong. But we were stronger. But you just... <laughs> Absolutely. So what I'm saying, it wasn't an easy match. They didn't give it to you. You worked hard. And, and please, the team was just amazing. I, I mean, my heart was just, just floating out there, feeling for you. What, is, what does it take to actually convince your players that they are going to win. Have that winning mentality. I think we have a group of players that has been together for a while and we have a group of players that has this mentality that no matter what's in front of them, you know, they will walk right through that. Yeah. We have this group of players that has the belief amongst themselves and doesn't matter who goes onto the pitch that they can do the job. And we have a group of players that has, has its other's backs. Yeah. I think that is the important thing. So when we were going to play Morocco, we had already planned what we were going to do. We were going to change how we play because of the way they play. And we knew that the stadium was going to be packed. Um, 
before our training sessions, we were shifted to a new venue. The sprinklers went up. And that's things that actually motivate you more because, you know, they're trying yeah. to, you know, play with your mind. Yeah. And on the way to the stadium, we saw all these people walking. And when we got to the stadium, there wasn't a, wasn't a place for an ant. And as the players came out to do the pitch walk, normally come out, they came out singing and dancing. Oh, wow. When we went back in and came out for the warm-up, I was just sitting there and one of the journalists came to me and she asked me, are you okay? And I said, no, it's not up to them, so don't worry. Oh, yes. Everything is sorted. And while the lasers and all of that was going on, we were not phased because we knew back home we had 60 million supporting us. We got all the... We got all the prayers, we felt that, we got all the messages, we felt that we got a video call with the president, and the day before he asked us, are you bringing the, tro the trophy back? Home. And they said, yes, confidently they said yes, and I thought we had planned really well and worked out really well, and, and then the nine minutes came. <laughs> I think that was the longest nine minutes, but we were so confident, and at the end of the day, you know, everybody was crying, and praying and everything else, because it wasn't just about us. No. You know, I, as a player, also tried to win the WAFCON. There were many that have come before, and Panyana didn't start when I came. There's other coaches, you know, when you build the house, you, you lay the foundation Absolutely. and all of those things. So there's other coaches that have come before. And I remember Amanda Lamini saying to me, coaches is personal, and I absolutely agree, because it was about those that have tried before, coaches that have tried before, coaches that work in the league, that might think they're insignificant. They play a huge role because they work with the players every single day. Administrators, you know, the person in the office that does all the logistics. It's about all of them. It's about everybody involved in women's football. But it's more about bringing the country together. Because I think that brings yeah. the country together. Sport unites. Sport unites. And I think I was talking about load shedding and the next minute there was pictures on social media, people sitting on their phones in the dark, people oh sitting on their laptops. And Dr. Jordan always says, says to us, um, you know, we entertain us as footballers. There's people that have a lot of challenges at home. They either come to the stadium or they watch. And for that 90 minutes, put a smile on their faces. And that's what we try to do. The game... Um that led you to come home early. I, I believe you, you deserve to stay longer. You, you really put up a big, big, strong battle. How did you feel after losing that game? How did <coughs> you motivate your team? And how did you find motivation for yourself? How, what do you do? How do you pull yourself together and, and be strong for the team? Look, um, we had celebrated throughout the night, with all due respect, when we qualified for the last 16. They had to come and take us out of the dressing room because we were celebrating so much, because we had to travel the next day, and I think the traveling was harsh. We traveled the next day, didn't train, obviously, because we traveled from Wellington to Sydney. Yeah. It was a three-hour flight. Then we got there, and the next day we had a recovery. The following day we prepared for the match, and I normally take the last session, and I had 15 minutes to get ready for the next game. We knew that we could beat the Netherlands. Um, we hadn't taken our chances. And I remember before I came into the dressing room where Phil Bejani was saying, look, the goalkeeper's keeping you in the game now. We've got to do this. And then obviously we picked up the two injuries, but the squad we had selected, we felt that no matter what happened, somebody could step up, um, you know, and we didn't win the game, but we will sit back on our cultures when we're all done with football and we'll think, that was the opportunity for us to win the World Cup. Mm. Because when you looked at the games, you could not predict who would win on the day. Absolutely. It was that type of World Cup. And when we looked at, when you look at the stats coming out of the World Cup, a lot of our players are on the stats. And they only played four games. Wow. Some played seven games. And the players, you don't need to make, motivate players at a World Cup. You don't need to motivate players for anything when it comes to that. No, they were self-motivated. They had their own meeting of how they, you know, how are they going to motivate each other. My role is just to make sure that the plan comes into place. Yeah. My role is to make sure that they are ready. That is my role. And at the end of the day, they have to execute the plan. And we knew we were disappointed. But coming out of into the last 16 was our mandate. And we said anything after that is going to be a bonus. But we were really, really disappointed, but really proud because we didn't go down fighting. Yeah. I think everybody that was in the st stadium wanted us to win that game. 
the excitement that the South African team brought, not only with their performance, but with their singing and dancing. Yes. I think that just, you know, put people in Little. awe, mm -hmm. put them in awe. And they said that they were going to miss us. And I said, we want to be remembered as a team that played fantastic football. But we also wanted to be remembered as a team that showed our culture from back home of who we are. And we try to stay true to that. We don't change for anyone. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> and lastly, before we let you go, how do we make sure that there is equal play in sports? How do we close that gap? Talk to us. I think, I think broadcasting, broadcasting plays a huge role because you get revenue from broadcasting. If you look at super sport currently with rugby and cricket, it's millions. Now, if you don't have that millions, how can you have you know, a professional league? If you yeah. don't have that millions, how can you give someone a salary? Currently, there is equal pay. The Panyana ladies are getting the same as Bafana. Absolutely. <laughs> I, said that, I said that gold medal from WAFCON is gonna open a lot of doors, but Wow. What, I want to yeah. wonder, what I want to say is that I'd like to pick the brain of people that's in sponsorship because what more must Banyana do? What more must Custer do? What more was, must others do? It's not just about football. Absolutely. But what more must they do? Tell us so we know. Because your performance speaks for itself. And your performance needs to get you that sponsorship. Your performance needs to get you that accolades. So what more must we do? I think Cecil has a female CEO and or director or whatever. She has decided to make that decision. And it's women in those leadership roles. Not because you are a woman, but because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do because Women in sport and women that are in sport must do extraordinary things to get the recognition. And we don't have to. We train just as hard. We play 90 minutes plus like the men do. So it's nothing different. So what more must they do? It's women in leadership that, like Cecil took the decision. They sponsored the men's under 23 team for a very long time. And they left that and came into women's football. Two successive Olympic Games, two successive World Cups, Two finals in WAFCON, one a winner. Four success of Kosafa Cups. I think other sponsors must be jealous because that is the return in investment. So my plea is if there are any influential business women that are in leadership, have a look and see. It doesn't have to be football. It can be any other sport. Mm -hmm. We spoke in 2017 about a professional league. When I was playing back in the day, I was dreaming about the professional league. And if I was in corporate, I would be in retirement. That's how old I am. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and that's such a long time. It's the two of us. But are we going to wait until 2007 or 2027 when the World Cup is next and hopefully it's in South Africa when it's next? Are we going to have the same conversation that we need to have a professional league? We need to take this momentum of getting this fantastic result at the World Cup and pushing on. Because it's not just about us, it's for the generations to come. And that's what we always think about, the ge next generations to come. If we don't pave the way, they're going to go through the same struggles. And there's certain ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. you know. So I urge and I plead with people in leadership, think about where you want to take your company. Think about the route that you want to go. Think about all of that because, yes, you want to sponsor the Kaiser Chiefs and you want to sponsor the Orlando, Orlando Pirates, but women have shown that they can step into that space and be successful. So totally. They have shown that they can give you the mileage that you want. They have shown all of those things, but sometimes we are afraid to take that step. We are afraid to take that step into the unknown because we think it's unknown. Cecil took a, take, took a brave decision to go out of a successful under-23 team that had done so well at the Olympics to go into women's football and started in 2009, and they are still there. And I'm not sure why other sponsors are not coming on board. Even with players, we have players that play abroad that are internationally sponsored. And that's the way to go. It mustn't be a handout of a pair of soccer boots. I remember when I was at my club Spurs, 
I went to this particular bank because the gentleman wanted to meet and he wanted to sponsor. And I was so excited. I thought, wow, this is my lucky break. You know what he said to me? <laughs> he has two sets of kit. I said to him, sorry, I don't want it. He said, I said, I've got a whole house full of kit because we get kit every year. I don't need your kit. You're going to have mileage, your name on here, and you're going to get how much out of that are you going to get. So thank you, but no thank you. That's and I think, yeah. I think we need to be brave. Absolutely. We yeah. need to be brave when we do that. Sometimes a woman gets into a position because... Compromise too much. Because they need to have a woman there. I think if you are in that position and it happens that you're just a token, you have to be brave enough to say, this is not what I want. There's one thing that Coach Vera taught me. One thing besides football, never allow yourself to be abused because if it happens once, Amen. it will happen forever. So Amen stand to up. That. Amen to that. Stand up and yeah. take your space, right? Yeah, absolutely. Stand up and know your worth and know your value. Totally. Because it doesn't matter who you are. God has given each of us a talent. And you have got to use that talent. And if you don't use it, then what happens? You'll be sitting somewhere isolated, so. <laughs> Desiree, I set my alarm clock and it's just gone <laughs> off because I know I've got to get you back to football. Just one other thing that we can do for those of us who cannot sponsor. We know that the women's, this World Cup, there were more than a billion people that watched. Yeah. Isn't that what sponsors want? Yes. So what can we do in our own individual spaces if we cannot sponsor? Look, the major thing in South Africa is also facilities or the lack of facilities. Some of the places where these girls play on is not conducive to being better. It's also creating opportunities. Not everyone's going to be a coach. It's creating an opportunity in a leadership role as a manager, as a performance analyst, because there are not many women in those spaces. It's creating those opportunities, but not just creating the opportunity, it's supporting it. Because I can give someone an opportunity and just leave them there to hang but it's supporting that person, making sure that you create an opportunity for someone else, we create an opportunity for someone else. Then we'll have more leaders. Absolutely. Then we'll have more individuals that will create opportunities for others. It's about taking someone with you and not going by yourself. It's about sharing your experiences. Because sometimes as coaches, you are afraid to share <laughs> because you're afraid they're going to beat you. No, it's not about that. It's about making sure that that coach creates opportunities for others. It's about making sure that women's football, not Desiree, not Dr. Precious, women's football grows, not just one person, because you die tomorrow with all that knowledge, what's going to happen. So do not be afraid to share, do not be afraid to lend your expertise, and if they are better, it's because you're not doing your job. So don't be afraid to share, don't be afraid to help someone else, because we're not on this earth just to be. We're on this earth to make a difference, and sometimes you think it's that small, but that 1% difference makes a huge difference to someone else. Thank you so much, Desiree. Coach Desiree. <laughs> I always have to remind myself, it's Coach Desiree, it's not Desiree. Thank you, Coach Desiree, for sharing those nuggets with us. Ladies, I'm sure you, believe, you, 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 you know and you believe that what Desiree has shared really applies in our own business environment. Teamwork sharing, you know, being there for others, leading with humility, um, ensuring that people come up behind you. Desiree, you have been an incredible leader, and I urge you please to reach out to Desiree, Coach Desiree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she is such an open and available person, and she would love for you to assist her football, and women in sports in general. So I, I brought her out here so that we can talk to her and hear how we can help. And, um, and I'm sure you have heard it all. Desiree, thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Oops, We've got a off. little gift for you. Let me just... We have um, I want to say you. thank you very much for the invitation. I also want to say that you look absolutely beautiful. Um, and uh, I'm dressed as a coach, <laughs> but I can also clean up really well. <laughs> I can clean up really well, um, but enjoy the rest of the day. 
I'm sorry I can't stay with you. Um, I have another engagement. I've come from one to come here. And I don't want to miss that an opportunity to see someone special um, because I might not see a footballer again. So I make sure that I go to matches to make sure that I give each and every child an opportunity to be seen. Thank you, Desiree. And we have a little gift for you. We have a little gift for you, you. here. It's from the House of Nala. Thank you. There's some champagne in there. I, I don't I drink. I know you don't drink. <laughs> But we want you to have something to have at home and remember us by. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.